So this is the uh, we have total three examples based on doubly reinforced um, concrete beams. Uh, we like to uh, find the capacity, the bending capacity of these um, reinforced concrete beams. So this is kind of you can say analysis. There are two kinds as Heather mentions. This is analysis. In the analysis, you have given the uh, steel rio or compression rio b, the width of the beam. Uh, depth of the beam, all the geometric dimensions and those other dimensions are given and they will ask you to find the capacity of your beam. Another one is the design where they will give you this uh, design capacity like M star and then you figure it out this AST or ASS. So there are two kinds. Either they have give you the B and D and you find the reinforcement, uh, sorry, you, they will give you all the details and you find the capacity. Otherwise, they will give you the design moment uh, and then you figure it out the, the reinforcement. So this is first, which is analysis where you have give, you need to find this MU yoke. We have 600 millimeter by 350 millimeter doubly reinforced sections. FC dash equal to 32. There is a stirrups, R10 stirrups, that stirrups here sitting here. That is given 30 millimeter cover. So from this stirrup to here is 30 millimeters. And from here to here, this cover is 60 millimeters. Now, by the way, uh, uh, how do we know whether this one is um, is, is a comp doubly reinforced or not? So I think um, when you have to have this, uh, uh, when I take you the examples, I think they will they will give you more details. Let, let, let's start 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 giving this um, uh, solving this example. So uh, uh, of course we need to solve some of these uh, details. Let me tell you something. The, the 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 main thing that we need to follow is the same same strategy that last week. Oh, by the way, there is some details here that you can go through it. Um, I don't want to read it, but they are just what whatever. I will I will go through it one by one. So so what what is the strategy here? We will have a strain first, either in the concrete and steel. From the stress strain, you will get the stress. From the stress, you will get the force. Uh, you will get means you will calculate the forces and then you will calculate the moment. Right? That is the analysis procedure we follow. How are you going to know the strain? The standard will tell you that the concrete has this strain. Uh, how are you going to find the yield strength? 0.025. You said okay to um, 500 divided by 200 yield strength. So you will get this, this strain. Once you know the strain from the stress strain diagram, you can calculate the stress in the concrete and then stress in the concrete is uh, um, uh, 500 megapascal for steel, right, if it is on the yield. So once you know the strain, then you just multiply by area of the concrete, multiply by area of the steel. If it is compression, then you multiply by this, you can get the forces. And once you know the force, you multiply by the respective distance, let's say DC, D and so on. So you can calculate the MUO. So that's the that's the overall procedure. Among this one, the main uh, troublemakers is always DN, depth of the neutral axis. We need to somehow find the depth of the neutral axis, either singly reinforced or doubly reinforced. Once you know the DN value, then our our life is significantly, uh, or or we can solve these examples in a in a simple manner. There are a couple of checks that we need to make that I will I will tell you in a, uh, as we solve. So let's start solving these examples. So what we have given? This is given. Let me draw that one. So we have given this this um, uh, these cross sections here. We have given this um, uh, top rio, uh, and then we have given you this um, eight uh, with the spacer bar. Uh, right, and then we have a stirrups as well. We have stirrups. All right, so now uh, based on that one, we need to have a strain value. So now here we're going to add one more, like this. Uh, like this, uh, we're going to add one more, meaning that uh, last times we have this, uh, if you remember that, we have this EST. And then we have this um, 0 0.003 strain in the concrete. This is a strain in the uh, tension uh, reinforcement. And we have this depth of the neutral axis. That is the unknown value all the time. Now we have one more addition, which is this one. 
what is that this is the strain in the compression reinforcement that is then additional component last week we have only two strain est which is the tensile and another one is 0.03 but today uh, lectures we added one more strain so that is going to add one more component and then we have a stress as yes, the stress is almost the same story that like last times you have these um, these alpha 2 epsides and then you have uh, you have these uh, let's say blue color one let's say this is tension uh, let's say this is concrete compression and there is a one more by the way that we're going to do it is is this this rio this is um, uh, 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 ten, um, steel rio let's say steel in compression so you have three now and then you can calculate the moment muo with the capacity factors so let's let's uh, same procedures that muo equal to this force t times by distance some distance we will tell you where we're going to take the moment then this uh, cc because one would be minus or uh, plus we will say which side we are taking basically we're going to have a three force and we have three distances that we're going to uh, going to work it out so that's the overall procedures that i just captured now to do this one we need to crack some of these new things okay now let's do the first one area of uh, steel in compressions right let's 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 get this one out first so let's denote it by area of steel in compression equal to uh, how many bars we got we got 2n28 bars okay 2n28 bars you can go in the in the in these tables uh, to uh, to n28 1 2 3 2 millimeter square right so that's good good so we can put this 1 2 3 2 millimeter square because we have 2 n28 bar and we can get it from rio data table so that's first area of the uh, bottom uh, stock rio is done now let's say area of steel in tension. Let's denote it by A S T. How many bars we got in the bottom Rio? We have a 8 and 28 bars. Uh, sorry, 8 and 24 bars, not 28. So we can go back here. 8 and so we have 8. 24 and if i just cross it out here here they will meet here so 3616 millimeter square so 3616 millimeter square because we have how many 8 and and by the way is the ductility class okay the rio data table all right so area of the steel done area of the board steel is done now let's work out this uh, uh, small d and capital d so what happens here we have this uh, by the way let's let's go back to that figure here because we already have this so let's say we give them name this depth of the top rio as a dsc and let's give them this you know this small d right we done it many times this one so that is small d effective depth now let's work out dsc dsc meaning is a depth of the compression rio now the dsc that you can get it from cover what is the cover here that cover is that cover is top one is 60 millimeters let's put it that 60 millimeters plus that cover plus this uh, steed up how much steed up we got r10 so we have 10 millimeter steed ups plus we have this rio red one what is the rio 28 rio so halfway through right halfway through of 28 
So that would be 28 millimeter divided by 2. So if you use calculator 60 plus 10, 70, uh, 84 millimeters, if everyone agree with me that uh, the top Rio, that the top Rio here, two Rio, they are sitting at from the top one is 84 millimeters, right? That's, 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 I hope you, you don't have any issue to calculate that one. Small d, now this small d is, we got it many times, but I think there is some trick here that, that we need to find, that this small d would be from the center of the spacer bar. So how do we find that? We will take the whole cap, capital D first. How much was that? Is 600. So let's say that is whole big capital D is 600. So let's get that. 600 millimeters. Take away the cover. Take away cover meaning this this distance. How much cover we got? Cover we got bottom 30 millimeters. So 60 millimeter take away 30 millimeter. Then we will take this stirrups 10 millimeters. I think we done the stirrup 10 millimeters uh, just now. So we put 10 millimeters. Then this Rio, the big Rio that here the the bottom layer of the rio that is 24 millimeters so let's take it 24 millimeters take away 24 millimeters and then we need to go through halfway through that spacer bar so if i go through halfway through the spacer bar and the spacer bar is 32 so we just need to make it 16 millimeters or let's say 32 divided by 2 32 millimeter divided by 2 so if i just simplify that i would get 520 millimeters so what we done so far so far, we calculate the area of the steel compression, easy, area of the steel intentions, and we find the distance from the top of the beam to the to the to the compression rio and uh, small small d, uh, which is the, the tension rio. And there are two factors that we always needed. If you remember that are friendly, alpha two, and if you if you go back to the if you go back to uh, the standard on section number eight, we are working on section number eight. If you come back to the sec, uh, close 8.1.3, and on that close, you can see alpha two equal to 0 0.85, 0 0.015 epsides. Alpha two is greater than 0.67. So that's fine. Let me copy that. 0 0.85, take away 0 0.0015 epsides. So 0 0.85 take away 0 0.015 times by epsides. What was the epsides we got? Let me close this one, 32 megapascals. So that's fine. This is empirical equation. So uh, the unit does not come into the pictures. So if I use the calculators, it will tell me 0 0.802, which is greater than 0 0.67, therefore, alpha 2 is okay all check is okay we can take alpha 2 equal to 0 0.82 and gamma is also given just uh, down here 0 0.97 take away 0 0.025 epsides and gamma as well greater than 0.67 so i would have a 0 0.97 take away 0. take away 0. 0 0.025 epsides so we just uh, uh, multiply by 32 empirical equations unit does not count so you get 0 0.89 by using the calculators we get 0 0.67 therefore gamma check is okay we can take gamma value equal to 0 0.88 now we need to make some assumptions that uh, uh, that look this 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 new this 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 steels which is which is in the red the top rio should be at yield okay it's not at yield but we need to make an assumption right now and we're gonna make it check because of course it's very close to the it's very close to the dn value look at this dn it's very close to this one compared to here so of course it will not gonna yield right if you are closer to if the steel rio sitting next close to the dn value uh, depth of the neutral axis, it will not gonna yield. I'm, I'm sure it will not yield. 
I'm, I'm 100% sure that these will not kill. So I would like to make a very bold assumption, bold assumption meaning that it will not going to work. Let's say ASC, which is the stop rio, is at yield. Okay, let's, let's for mathematical reasons, let's assume that we have that yield and we're going to check later. Let's say we're going to check later, right? We need to make sure that it's not yielded. And if it's not yielded, what, what would be we going to do it? Let's assume that for mathematics, let's it's at yield. So if at at yield, if I at yield, then then uh, force, then compression force, let's assume at at yield, compression force in top rio or or compression rio equal to you know the force is equal to stress of the rio times by the area of the rio right now stress is a ill stress because we make a assumption so that is fs1 and if it is at yield and if you use n bars we have 500 megapascals which is basically newton per millimeter square times by area of the top rio we calculated uh, 1, 2, 3, 2 millimeter square. So you have 1, 2, 3, 2 millimeter square. So if you use the calculators, you will get 616000 Newton force that are sitting, that are taken by the top rio, right? But the condition is they should be at yield, okay? So this is the uh, first one. Let's say how much compression force how much compression force taken by force in concrete in concrete let's say how much compression look there are three components here right uh, top rio concrete and tensile rio so all three components will contribute into into the into the into the uh, into the moment so we just need to get that value so basically this is stress and this is your area. Remember last week in the lectures, I explained you how you get this area and so on. So alpha 2 was 0 0.802, 0 0.802, 32 megapascals, concrete strength, gamma value, we get is 0 0.89. Dn we need to find B value. B value we have given 350. Right, so let's plug that value. So we have 350 millimeters. Right, so if you just plug into the calculators, you get 7994.336 Dn. Right, so that's the Dn that we're going to calculate. Now, uh, tension force in bottom rio, right? So basically, I'm just calculating there are top rio and there are eight bottom rio. So this is the force which is um, which we calculated. Uh, let's say this force is CS. This force is CS this concrete one that is cc and this one here which is let me put the value as a tension so this is tension force so we just calculating the tension force again the of course this bottom wall will be yielded that is no doubt about it uh, because the area of the steel in the bottom rio we have calculated 3616 millimeter square so 3616 millimeter square times 500 newton per millimeter square or we can make it mega pascals so if you just calculate that you will get 1808000 newtons right so now equilibrium now this beam is not horizontally equilibrium right all these forces the let's say compression forces are going this is compression force going here, compression force going here, and tension force going uh, on this side. So let's say some of the forces in the x directions. Let's say horizontal equilibrium. Horizontal force equilibrium, right? Because this 
beam should be in equilibrium all these forces compression force and tension force should be in equilibrium meaning that all sum the they will give you the zero uh, the 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 value that you, you you get it so let's say this is tension force positive so 1808000 newton positive going left to right these are two negatives let's say this concrete one compression force negatives 7 994.366 dm and let's say there is another compression force which is not right but let's let's try it 61600 newton equal to zero right so what happens here i have uh, three forces one is this force is going bottom 1808000 newtons and then you have these forces which is concrete one um, let's say other way around so the concrete one going compression like this and the tension one is is going like this so this one is let's say 616000 newton which is top rio which is top rio and the concrete one is 7994.336 dn right so that's uh, equilibrium and this is by, by the way three four five six seven eight this is the eight rio at the bottom and these are concrete so you have three forces and there is a one unknown sitting here dn so if i just simplify that i would get dn equal to 149 millimeters right now this dn is saying that okay you have these concrete beams now this dn is sitting somewhere here let's say this dn 149 millimeters now that dn that you calculated is not correct why is not correct because that is not correct because this is saying that this one should be at the yield right we make this assumptions right if it is at yield only and only that dn is correct now let's check if that if that yielding is correct then we we accept this dn this x dn we can accept it only if the top rio at yield point right if it's not then this dn value is not correct we need to do the interactive process in that case now let's let, let's check it out uh, let's say we draw this there are two one two three four five six seven eight okay i'm not drawing the spacer bar now let's draw this strain diagram here and there is a one more here now this is esc this is est and that is 0 0.0 0 0.03 concrete okay now let's calculate this esc uh, the strain in the top rio how are we going to calculate because dn value we already know for this case is 149 this is dn just we calculated right that is here now let's break in triangles here that uh, let me see how are we going to take the triangles esc divided by okay so that's good okay now let's say this ESC divided by this distance. How are we going to get this distance? Because this distance would be 149 millimeter take away 84 millimeters. Where this 84 coming from? You remember that DSC we calculated, right? That is the depth of the top rio. Uh, where we calculated? Mm, yeah, there you go, 84 millimeters, right? So that 84 millimeters I just plug here. So these triangles which I take it, that horizontal distance divided by this vertical distance. There is an equivalent triangle here, 0 0.03 similarly divided by 149. I hope you understand that. So if I redraw these two triangles differently, that is 0 0.03 and you have 149. And there is a one more little one which has the same angle but this distance is 
149 take away 84 and that is ESC. So this divide by this. So that is first one take equal to this divide by this. So if I want to calculate ESC in that case 0 0.003 times by 149 take away 84 over 149 you will get 0 0.0013. Now let's check it out. Yield strength of the steel with the 500 megapascal of steel over 200,000 megapascal of yield strength you get 0 0.0025. Now the strain in the top Rio, which is 0 0.0013, is less than yield strain 0.0025 ESY. Therefore, top Rio is not yielded. Let me write it here. Therefore, top Rio is not yielded. All right, so this is the blow up here. Blow up meaning this DM, which is 149 millimeters that we have calculated, that we calculated because we have put this 500 megapascals, right? We put this 500 megapascal. Now, this is not yielded because the, we assume that this steel is yielded. This is at this point where you have 500 at 0 0.0025 but we have not yielded we have somewhere here we don't know where so this dn value cannot be considered because the top rio has not yielded so now what we do now let's try to assume some dn value let's say we have a let's say we started dn at 149 millimeters that was the starting point when we assume that top rio had yielded and it did not work it out. Uh, it did not work it out. So that's fine. Let's do dn equal to 200 millimeters. Let's take a. Um, so what 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 happens? Why I take 200? Because you look. Um, uh, this 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 point that you that that we get it. So if you want to increase the strain in your in your in your top rio, so you have 149. 149 millimeters so if you increase then the strain in here will be increased because the further the the if the dn if your your rio sitting further from that one the steel start to start to yield and then the 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 so the further it will go the, the the strain will be increased as i will going to show you today i'm going to show you here so let's say dn equal to equal to so let me draw it up here clearly so let's say you have this dn value here let's say 149 and let's say this is esc you calculate oh sorry esc you calculate we calculate esc as a 0.0013 now if i just increase that dn somehow let's say you put it here as a as a 200 then your strain value you can see the space here you can see this distance and this distance. So that is going to be more than 0 0.0013. So it, the strain basically gonna increase. So let's try, let's try dn equal to 200 millimeter. Keep in mind dn equal to 149 millimeter did not work. So let's try dn equal to this work. Now ultimate goal is to get this value equal to zero. Right? This is our ultimate goal ultimate goal that we need to make this one zero in a way that so we need to this is this is a puzzles puzzles means we need to keep this dn changing until you get this one zero right that's that's kind of a so you have this one that is a target so somehow we need to plug the dn value in a way that 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 um, that that your your this one and keep in mind that top rio is not yielded so we can't just 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 do the do this one so let's let's repeat the whole procedure again Repeat the whole procedure. Meaning, let's calculate. Uh, let's calculate this one first. Let's calculate uh, this one first. ESC strain in the top rio. ESC. Remember what was the equation? 0 
and then you have this remember this is 149 is a dn but now we change that dn to 200 so 200 take away 84 over 200 so what would be the strain in the top rear is 0 0.0017 so look at that as I mentioned, so if you if you drag your DN down, so the, your rear seating falter from the depth of the neutral axis, that strain will increase. But the strain has not increased in a way that it will still yield it because our yield strain, our yield strain was 0 0.025. So it's still less than 0 0.025. So still this still is not yielded yet. So that's fine, no problem. So we can't use, so we cannot use FSY equal to yield strain 500 megapascal. So what can we use in that case? So that's fine, sigma FC, you know the young modulus of the steel, which is stress is equal to, we are using this relation, stress is equal to young modulus. times by strain. So the Young modulus was 200 megapascals times by the strain value is 0 0.0017. So basically we get that value of 336 megapascals. Right? So we can't use 500 but we can use 336. Okay that sounds good. Now we can also calculate the steel in the uh, we can calculate now uh, uh, force in concrete remember cc uh, sorry first we calculate the force in the in the rio right because we know the stress now we can calculate the force in the top rio which is 336 times by the area. I'm just repeating again these steps. Which steps I'm talking about? These steps. That compression force in top rear. Instead of 500, we will using this 336 and 1232 is the, is the area. So 1232. So this is the force in the top rear. You will get 413952 newtons. So this is the force in the top rear. Um, force in the concrete. Uh, we have that equation again. I'm just repeating the steps again, but instead of different dn value, uh, I'm using different dn value. And that was here, uh, this uh, concrete compression force, alpha to 0 0.802, 32, gamma 0 0.89, dn now 200 that we're going to use, and 350, all other values are same. So let's copy that, uh, that, that from here. So you have stress alpha 2 times by the area is gamma dn b and we we done this one previously but instead of uh, dn which is we use which is we, we going to use what we assume so 32 megapascals times by gamma is 0 0.89 times dn is 200 millimeters that we assume and B is 350 millimeters. So in that case, we will get 1598867.2 newtons, right? So that is the force in the concrete. And force, tension force in the bottom rear, I think is exactly the same because it has not going, it's not depend on the depth of the neutral axis. So 3616 millimeter. 3616 millimeter square times by and this bottom rio will be at the yield okay if you're not sure we can also verify that one at the end once you finalize everything 0.000 newtons okay now uh, let's check whether is the equilibrium going to happen let's say cc plus cs minus t equal to how much so we have this 413952 413952 newton that is the compression force in the steel uh, let me put cs and cc and then you have this force which is plus 
1598867.2 newton and then to finally this force which is in the tension so 1808000 newton so i my target is to get zero but it is not zero 204819.2 newtons see now let me tell you the tell you the whole pictures that we started dn equal to 149 millimeters and the steel is not yielded top rio is not yielded so it, we can't use that one then we said dn let's take dn equal to 200 millimeter and we did not reach the equilibrium did not reach equilibrium what equilibrium you get is is you have this extra value 204819.2 newtons right there are some extra force i need to make this one zero i want to read off this 204 newtons i want to read off that one so how about if i go approach this way then this will reduce right this force will be reduced so if i go the neutral axis because here here what happen here we have this 149 first and it did not work then we have this 200 did not work how about we go in between how about we go in between in between meaning how about you have let's say 150 200 let's say you have 150 mm you have 200 mm so you have 50 mm gap so divide by 2 let's say we go 175 let's say in between and see what happens okay that's good so let's try dn equal to 175 mm exactly the same steps we going to follow we first going to calculate this yield strength of the uh, oh, uh, sorry we will calculate the strain in the top rio then we calculate the stress in the top rio then we calculate the force in the top rio then we for calculate the uh, force in the concrete based on that new dn and t and we will check whether it get zero or not if it get zero we accept that dn and we make all the checks again so let's try again i hope you know the drill now that i have 170 we tried dn equal to 149 mm did not work dn equal to 200 mm did not work now dn equal to let's try 175 mm and let's see if it is going to work or not so let's start with strain in the top rio 0.03 dn value is 175 take away 84 over 84 i think i show you this one three time this equation so you know this value right 0.016 so that is a strain in the top rio stress in the top rio is equal to young modulus times the strain then you will have a stress in the top rio is 320 megapascals by the way still this one is not yielded okay because you have 0.0025 yield strain right so it's not yielded so we need to calculate the stress we can't use 500 so if you calculate the stress we have force so the force is equal to stress times area the stress we just calculated times by the area i think you know 1 2 3 2 mm square you get this one as a 394 it's just repetition okay i saw you this one before three times okay we done it for d equal to 149 d equal to 200 we just go strain stress force strain stress force okay three component this is your top rio this is your top rio now let's do the uh, concrete one cc equal to force in the concrete is alpha 2 fc dash and area gamma dn b so alpha 2 i think i we calculated that one and 32 mega pascals gamma is we also calculated 0.89 sorry this is repetition this is how the uh, double e reinforce work because the dn is a trouble maker as i mentioned 350 mm so we got 175 please note this is the only difference this is the only difference this is the only difference okay these are the two difference all the time we just need to target all other values are same there is not much difference between the other values so if you change those one your value are changing 1399008.8 newtons and now the final is the bottom rio 
the force in the bottom rio is tensile i think they are stem est fsy because it's not depend on your dn so i think we calculated 108000 Newton, right? Because this bottom rio does not depend on your on your steel. So let's check equilibrium. That C C plus C S minus T equal to zero. Now C C is this one. One three nine nine zero zero eight point zero eight newtons. C S is three nine four two four zero. Three nine four. Two four zero newton, and the last one does not change, which is one eight zero eight zero 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 newton. So if I do this one, is oh, minus one four seven one two point two newtons, which is again not zero, right? But we have a good news here. Good news meaning, look, this is the zero line that we are targeting, right? This is the zero line we are targeting. When you have D N. Uh, let's say this is zero line. When you have D N, let's say this is D N. Let's say this is D N. When you have D N is 200 millimeters. That's we done it right. That D N is 200 millimeters. Your your force is 204819. So when you have D N, your force is 204. How much was it? 204.819.2. Let's say this is the force, that residual force. Okay, that you need to make it zero. And then when you have a 149, when you have a, uh, let's say this is the uh, 149. Uh, sorry, this is 175. 175. Uh, we got negative value. Which is let me put negative value here, which is one minus one forty seven five one point two. Now we need zero somewhere. We need zero. So we know that the value between one seventy five because when you traveling from here to here, at some stage it cross zero, right? Because you go positive to negative. Do you agree with me? Because when you use two hundred, it has positive. Force residual. When you use 175, it goes 175 down. So it's it's very close now. It's not it's not far away to because you can see 14,750 and you have 204. So it's some it's something close to this 1475. You can see we are very close to zero. 14,000 is not 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 big compared to 204. So we can't go 200 because 200 is too much. So let's let's do the interpolations now. Let's say. You have 175 millimeters. You get minus 14751.2 dn. If I have 200, then you have 204819.2 interpolation. So what would be the dn value when we get zero? That's what the question is. So we can just quickly do it. 200 take away 175 over. 204819.2 take away take away 1475.12 is equal to this x take away 175 over 0 take away 1751.2 so if you calculate this x value then you get the dn value which is 177 mm right so it's almost that Let's try here now 177 and whether let's say it's give you the zero or not. So uh, let's check it out. Let's say it is give you zero or not. Okay. So same procedures, same style. That now D N equal to 177 millimeters. Check C C plus C S minus T equal to zero or not. Okay. Same story. We said strain is 0.03. This is by the way the strain in the top rio. Which is 177. Take away. Look, this is repetition. Okay, we done this is four time. I'm I'm showing you. So let's say 0.016. So still it is less than ill strength. So we need to calculate the stress in the top rio, which is the strain times by the Young modulus. So that will give you 320 megapascals. So the stress, strain, stress, force. Let's say C S. 
the force is area times by the stress 320 newton per millimeter square so you get some newton force which is 394 240 newtons that sounds good uh, concrete compression force is again alpha 2 fc dash and by the way this dn only the change all other parameters are same 0 0.802 times by 32 gamma value is 0 0.89 dn is 177 millimeters b is 350 millimeters right i think we done many times these examples similar one the above so 141997 point 472 newtons and then you have tension force which is which is does not depend on your dn value we done this one many times so let's check it out that cc plus cs minus t so you have 14 14 9 9 7 newtons plus we got 394 240 394 240 newtons take away this 1808000 so you will get almost uh, uh, 1.2 times 10 raised to 3 newtons which is almost zero okay we can't get it zero because of this rounding errors and all but it's very close so let's say we accept dn equal to 177 millimeters right once you solve the dn then all all your checks are, are, are good now what is the check let's check the ductility check ductility check how are we going to make the ductility check ductility check would be ku less than 0.36 we always target ku equal to less than 0.76 where is it so ductility checks is is here uh, uh, they have written somewhere oh here you go section with ku greater than 0.36 then we need to do this one but we need to make sure that we don't need to exceed this 0.36 otherwise we, we need to do this one but we make sure that we don't want ku value greater than 36 so let's calculate ku ku equal to dn on d which is 177 millimeters over dft is 350 millimeters so the ku value is 0 0.34 which is less than 0 0.36 therefore it is okay ductility is okay uh, we can also do the alternative checks uh, for ductility uh, for ductility alternative checks is the reinforcement ratio should be less than or equal to maximum reinforcement now how do we calculate the reinforcement ratio so the reinforcement ratio you can calculate area of the steel of tensions take away the area of the compression over the total area of your let's say this is this is total area which is b and d and this is the area of um, of this uh, tensile rio take away the compression rio now we know this area we calculated before take away one two three two millimeter square and then you have 350 times by 520 millimeters and millimeters so you get the reinforcement ratio is 0.0131 now we, we we need to check for these conditions okay we make sure that we follow this one we, we don't provide the reinforcement so now this equation is not given in the standard i believe let me check if it is given no it's not given in the standard it's based on this uh, ku value that alpha 2 gamma fc dash if you if you like you can put it in your cheat sheet that this equation is not given in the standard so we calculate the maximum rio alpha 2 we already know because we calculated that 0 0.89 gamma 32 megapascal is given for in the example and 500 megapascal for steel rio so we make it 0 0.0164 so row value which we calculated was 0. Point, oops sorry row value which is we calculated 0 0.0131 which is less than p maximum which is 0 0.1.0164 therefore it is okay so there is one kind of a ductility checks that we that we make 
Now, uh, another checks we need to make is the minimum fluxure capacity. If you come back here, that minimum fluxure capacity is here 1.2 times Z F C T dot F. Okay, and please note this is P A P. We don't need to consider pre-stress force. We don't need to consider pre-stress force because zero. We don't have pre-stress. So 1.2 Z F C T dot F. So let's say uh, minimum uh, minimum one. Uh, let's let's uh, get the minimum uh, fluxure capacity that um, by the way we can go for this minimum rio one and so one of them would be okay so when you do the checks either you make this check or you can make this check one of them if you satisfy then it's okay what is basically saying that some some engineers play smart and they might say i don't need rio so standard say no you must put some minimum rio and the, the, you you must satisfy this one so let's 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 go through this minimum rio one so if you go back to that close est minimum then you will have a zero point alpha b uh, D on D square F C T dot F dash on F S Y. Okay, by the way, this is here. That is the minimum Rio AST alpha B D D square F C T dot F Y uh, B W. So now what happens to this B W and D? Now this just I let's say let's put it here B W and D. So if I bring this one. AST minimum on BWD, you remember that one, the reinforcement ratio, that area of the tensile reinforcement over BD. So that's, I can say this is rho, right? So therefore I cancel that one. Alpha B is 0 0.2 is given here for rectangular sections, sorry, rectangular section, alpha B equal to 0 0.2. Now the depth is given 600 over 520 small d now this fct dot f is 0.6 times square root 32 where is given i think uh, if you go back to the section number section number three if you go to this section number close 3.1.13 you will find this fct dot f uh, values probably we will not finish these examples uh, as I mentioned in the workshop, I will take you through that uh, that these examples uh, remaining one. So 3.39 megapascals, we have 3.39 megapascals over 500. So basically that is your minimum reinforcement ratio and you get 0 0.00181. So if you check the row minimum, which is 0 0.00181, we should be greater than your your actual row. Your actual row was 0 0.0131, 0 0.0131 less than or equal to maximum one that we got it is 0 0.0164, 0 0.0164. So therefore, it is okay. Now. Uh, Let's let me stop here. Uh, moment capacities. We will go take you through this.